To the naked eye, the, the order of exercises in, in your workout, in your exercise session, can seem random. Sometimes it can seem like a random collection of exercises thrown together in a random order. But with a little bit of understanding on how the, the order of the exercises changes the session, you can ensure that you're getting the most out of that session and getting the most out of your training. So maybe we throw together the exercises in a certain order. The same exercises, the same number of repetitions, the same number of rounds, and the same weight. In a certain order, maybe this session will improve your localized muscular endurance, your stamina. Throw them together in a different order, however, and that session may be training your cardiorespiratory fitness. Even if all of the other variables are identical, changing the order can completely change that session. Now, to understand why it's important to understand the very basic truth of exercise programming, and that is, whatever the limiting factor of that session happens to be, that is what that session will train. So said another way, whatever the hardest part of that session is, whichever part you're struggling with most is what that session will improve. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say you're doing heavy back squats. You've got a heavy bar sitting on your back and because the weight is heavy, the limiting factor of that session is your strength. You can't lift more weight because you're not strong enough. It's what's stopping you from doing more. In this example, because strength is your limiting factor, strength is what will be trained by that session. If we now jump to the other end of the continuum, let's look at maybe a two kilometer run. Now for some people doing a two kilometer run, they will have to slow down, they won't be able to go as fast because their cardiorespiratory endurance is limiting them. The ability for their heart to pump the blood around their body to get it to those cells that need it. But maybe for other people, it's gonna be more of a localized muscular stamina that's a limiting factor. It's not that they're out of breath and they need to stop and catch their breath, but it's that their muscles are burning. Now for these people, they are gonna be training their localized muscular stamina. It's not cardiorespiratory endurance, it's muscular stamina. So the same exercise session, a two kilometer run, is gonna have a very different effect and a very different training effect for two different people. And again, in this example, just like the squat being limited by strength and therefore improving your strength, in the two kilometer run, for that person who's limited by their cardiorespiratory endurance, that's what the session will train. And the person who's limited by their leg stamina, that is what the session will train. Now you have to bear in mind that I'm talking here about a session which promotes general health and fitness, or what we call GPP, general physical preparedness. Now this is a style of exercise training, of exercise programming, which is not designed to make the strongest person or, or the best runner or the best a person in gymnastics, this is designed to improve general health, to improve all of these elements to an equal part. This is what we can do to ensure that we're maximizing the effect of the exercise session on your overall health and fitness, not on specific elements. So let's look at six different exercises and examine what effect it will have if we change the order of these movements. So let's look at a push up, a strict press, a pull up, a hang power clean, squatting, and running. So we've got a good mix of different movements here. We have a few where you're using your body weight as the load, as the resistance, a few where you're using some sort of external load like a barbell as the resistance. But there are some more common themes as well. If we look at those first two exercises that I mentioned, a push up and a strict press, even though one is body weight and one is lifting a barbell, they're both pressing type movements. Our second two movements, more on the pulling end of the scale, there's a pull up and a hang power clean. And our final two movements, the squat and the running, you can see that these are more lower body dominant. It's gonna be more limited by your legs. So if we were to cycle through these six movements in the order we've talked about, there's gonna be a certain effect because there's a certain limiting factor. Let's again look at those first two movements, a, a push up and a strip press. Because they're both pressing based movements, the limiting factor of that little couplet, of that combination of exercises, is going to be your pressing stamina. You're gonna to have to slow down because your arms are getting tired. We look at that second two movements. We look at a, a pull up and the hang power clean. Because this is more pull dominant, it's using those muscles involved in bending the elbow, that's gonna become a limiting factor. Again, you'll have to slow down because these muscles are fatiguing. And finally, as we move on to the squats and the run, the fact that you're pre-fatiguing your legs with the squats, 
probably means you're not gonna be able to run as fast as you would like to. Not because you're out of breath, but because those legs are wobbly. You've tested your localized muscular stamina. Now, of course, this is absolutely fine. As long as, and this is the important part, testing muscular stamina or training muscular stamina is the intent of that session. And you should always begin with intent. If you're looking to train the stamina of your body, your ability to complete a, a lot of reps without fatiguing, then grouping together similar type movements can be a great strategy. Doing your push-ups, then your strict press, alternating between the two can be a really good way to improve this localized muscular stamina. But remember, we're talking about this in the context of overall health. How do we improve your overall health and fitness and everything that encapsulates? And if we're looking to do that, then maybe a different ordering of exercises can be of more benefit. So what happens if we change the order of exercises here? Well, let's do that. Let's start with a push up, and then instead of doing another pushing movement, let's then do the hang power clean. So we go from a push to a pull, and then we'll do some squats, starting to use the lower body. We'll then go back to another pushing movement. So we will go to the strict press. We'll go from that pushing movement into a pulling movement, a pull up, and then finally into that run, another lower body dominant exercise. So we're cycling cycling between different movement types. We're going from a push to a pull to something with a lower body to a push to a pull back to the lower body. So what effect does this actually have? Well, it creates what's called blood shunting. We're confusing our body. We're forcing our heart to, to send blood to those muscles involved in the pressing exercises to take the nutrients and the fuel and to remove the waste and the negative byproducts of that exercise. And then suddenly, no sooner has it got there and started doing its job, that we are demanding it go now to the pulling exercises, to the pulling muscles in your body. So our heart has to work harder, our lungs have to work harder to deliver that fuel to take away the waste. So we have these two examples of the same six exercises, the same loads, the same number of repetitions, the same number of rounds, yet a very different effect. In one of the examples, we have your localized muscular stamina, your muscular endurance as a limiting factor, and therefore that is what that session will train. In the second example that we just talked about, it's more cardiorespiratory endurance, which is gonna be the limiting factor, because we are shunting that blood around to different parts of your body. Now, what this means is that you will get more work done in less time. Now, it's not gonna mean that you're not gonna get those muscular endurance benefits, because remember, we wanna benefit all areas of your health and fitness, from this single session. This is an example of concurrent training, training multiple elements of, of strength, of power, of cardiorespiratory endurance, of stamina, all in one session. We're not gonna be the best at any of these, but we can be highly competent at each to the point that it maximizes your health. If we were to do, say, five rounds of those first six exercises where we're overlapping and doing the same sort of movement types one after the other, it's gonna take you much longer than it would if you were doing five rounds of the second ordering that we talked about, where you're shunting blood to different parts of your body. Because you're doing more work in less time, or the same amount of work rather, in less time, you're able to get more benefit. Your intensity increases, and intensity is one of those variables that is really closely associated with the health and fitness benefits of your exercise session. So if you're looking to get the most bang for your buck out of your next exercise session, consider the order of exercises. And remember, whatever the limiting factor of a session is, is what that session will train. So identify what it is that you want to improve and ensure the order of the exercises in the next session you complete are conducive to giving you that improvement.